For the next seven days, I'm going to listen to nothing but Taylor Swift. And my biggest question is, will I become a Swifty? I have two rules. My first rule is that I must listen to her entire discography before listening to a song twice. That means I'm going through all 10 of her albums, which are just her studio album. And don't worry for all you Swifties out there, for any album that she re-recorded, I'm listening to Taylor's version because my friends explain the entire situation. My second rule is that I must listen to her every chance I get. So if I'm going for a run, if I'm at work, I'm in the car or I'm just chilling in the house, I'm listening to Taylor Swift. But either way, I'm gonna try and figure out why some people love her and some people hate her. But if you are, for some reason, ignorant to who Taylor Swift is, you don't know who she is or that much about her, allow me to explain. This will be a uh, Swift explanation. Okay, that was bad, I'm sorry. All right, so obviously Taylor Swift is a highly successful American singer-songwriter who's made significant contributions to the music industry. She was born in 1989 in Pennsylvania. She began her career at a young age, showcasing her talents, yeah, blah, blah, blah. And she quickly gained recognition for her catchy songs, relatable lyrics, and vulnerable storytelling. Her self-titled debut album was released in 2006, and it was like listening to a personal diary. Every two years after that, she kept dropping hit after hit, but in 2014, your girl shifted her style towards pop with the release in 1989, which had songs like Shake It Off, Blank Space, and Bad Blood. Now you know how if someone gets big enough, their fan base gets a name, Beyonce has the Beehive, Justin Bieber had the Liebers, and your girl Taylor Swift has the Swifties. And some would argue that her impact on the music industry and her ability to like reinvent herself made her one of the most influential music artists of this generation and for years to come. You know, I have a son and he's in the baby stage of life and with that becomes all the baby toys and the baby noise. So like I am hearing baby songs left and right, but that's okay, I'm not gonna neglect him for the sake of this video. Outside of that, I had to make my playlist in the morning, which, I mean, I, as I was making it, I was realizing how many songs I had to listen to. I think it was like 13 hours altogether, which isn't terrible, but one of the main things I'm trying to do is like listen to the songs and listen to the lyrics and understand where she's coming from. And as I've been listening to her first album, I, I could see how it's literally a personal diary. You know, people have joked saying that all she writes about is breakup songs and She's gonna date this person, break up with them, and write a song about them kind of thing. But I mean, she's pouring her heart out on these songs, and I know other artists do the same thing, but she's doing it in a way that relates to a specific audience. Overall, I would say day one wasn't bad. I didn't think it was gonna be bad. One thing I'm gonna do is like for each album, I'm picking my top three songs and honorable mentions. And so for the first album, her debut self-titled album, coming in at third place, we got the song Tim McGraw because it was good. But let me say, Tim McGraw, that's a bop. I don't know why I vibe with it so much. And then we got Teardrops, number two, and our song, which is number one. I know those those top two ones are like mainstream, kind of like everybody knows the songs. So uh, that might be why I knew them and I they just sounded good to me. And the honorable mentions are Picture to Burn and Should Have Said No. They just they just had a vibe. I just I just felt it. And remember, these are just my personal opinions. If you don't agree with these, I am so sorry. But don't hate me for it. At the end, I'll rank my like favorite albums and favorite songs. I am worried about tomorrow because I'm going running and I have to do about nine miles because I'm training for a marathon. So not just because it's Taylor Swift, but for you know anybody really. If you don't have like an upbeat song to listen to, it's kind of hard to run sometimes. So I'm a little bit worried about that, but we'll see what happens. What it do, day number two. You know, today started out, it was it was good. I did some chores around the house and eventually I just I just wanted to go ahead and get out of the way because I didn't know how I was gonna feel about it. I went ahead and got to my run. And I'll go ahead and say, spoiler alert, it wasn't as bad as I thought it was gonna be. It was weird, but it was bad. I mean, it wasn't that bad. I'm like mentally preparing myself for this first run and uh, I paused the music because I ain't taking no chances with any copyright stuff. But uh, that song, That's When uh, with, I think it's Keith Urban, I mean, I ain't gonna lie, I started bobbing my head a little bit, but I will say, if a song like that comes on while I'm running, it's gonna be a struggle. When I got in the car, the song Don't You was playing off of her Fearless album, Taylor's version, of course. And according to my running app, uh, this run should take me about an hour and 10 minutes to an hour and 25 minutes. So I should get a good bit, at least an album done. I mean, I'm, I think I'm at the end of this uh, Fearless one. I'm not, I can't really remember off the top of my head, but here we go. I thought it was gonna be. I listened to all these songs. I'm on the song Electric Touch. Which I didn't know she did a song with Fall Out Boy. So I'm learning stuff. There were some songs though that were like perfect for running, at least at my pace right now. So they might be going on my running playlist. No lie. Here are my top songs on Fearless. Number three on Fearless is You're Not Sorry. And then number two, You Belong With Me. Everybody knows that song. And number one, Love Story. Every, everybody knows that song too. So I, I might be just kind of going with the flow with those, but uh, yeah. Honorable mentions, Jump Then Fall, 
and then Bye Bye Baby. I specifically remember Bye Bye Baby because as it was playing, I realized that the BPM, the rhythm of the song was like perfectly in tune with my steps. And so as I was running, I was like, yeah, I can't remember the, how the song goes right now, but I just remember in that moment, it was, it was beautiful. I technically have three more runs after today's run. Tomorrow's I think is 10 miles. And then Saturday is my long run and that is 22 miles. And I have no idea how I'm gonna survive that. I'm not looking forward to it if I'm being honest. Went to grab some coffee for Abigail and me. And by the time I got back, I decided I just wanna take a moment, just be still and listen to the rest of the album, which I didn't realize was only five songs left. State of Grace started playing and I was like, oh, this must be the next album. But I didn't realize that the song Red was the second song on the album because when it started playing, I was like, oh, hang on real quick. Before I continue, let me just go ahead and say my top three for Speak Now. We got mine, Never Grow Up, Dear John, and my honorable mention is Electric Touch. I feel like since I recently had a son that the Never Grow Up song would like, it hit me in the, the, the feels a little bit. You know, I know it's talking about her daughter, but you know what I'm trying to say. So back to Red. I wanted to use that album for my run because I knew it was a little bit more upbeat. And as I'm running, I swear it was like a roller coaster of motivation because I knew you were trouble started playing and then all too well. And then back up to 22 and then down to I Almost Do. Then back up to We Are Never Ever Getting Back Together. And then I made it through after all that. It wasn't as bad as yesterday, but still pretty tough. I remember like in the Vine days, the I Knew You Were Trouble, when it would sing the song, and then now you're lying on the cold hard ground, and then the goat would play, and then it was, yeah. I guess you just had to be there. It was a good moment. So after my run, I tried to play a few rounds of Call of Duty while listening to Red, but then life hit me, so I didn't really have a chance to listen to anything until later. But I ended up falling asleep and ending my night by listening to the song Ronin. Yesterday was the last day before my big 22 mile run, and I was determined to get through all our albums. And you'll understand why I said yesterday just now. So I finished up Red, which was solid, along with these top three choices. You got All Too Well, 10 Minute Version, 22, and I Bet You Think About Me with Holy Ground and Message in a Bottle as honorable mentions. 1989 kicked in as I was doing things around the house. And this album was probably the album that I knew the most songs already. I guess I just didn't realize that all these songs were on this album specifically. Although 1989 is, it was what people call her transition to pop album. Although I would argue that on Red, she was kind of like testing the waters a little bit with songs like I Knew You Were Trouble, 22, and We Are Never Ever Getting Back Together. She just kind of wanted to see how that would work. And then after she saw the results, she was like, oh, okay, y'all like that? Boom, 1989. I think that's one of the, the best things I'm learning so far. And this probably happens with any artist, but like you take out their like hit songs and you listen to the songs that most people don't know or the diehard fans only know, all that kind of stuff. And they're actually good. I got through that album with ease. Like I said, I knew most of the songs, but here's my top three. Blank Space, Style, Bad Blood, and then we got Out of the Woods, Wonderland, Shake It Off, and Wildest Dreams, all as honorable mentions. Probably because I just, I know those songs, so that's probably why. Then as I was finishing things up on my computer, Reputation kicked in, and I almost completely forgot about the song Ready For It. Like I knew the the chorus, but I forgot how the rest of the song went because this album, I kind of just didn't really pay attention to Taylor Swift as much. But when that beat came in, I was like, ooh, okay. And then after Ready For It, Endgame came in, and I was like, really feeling it then. Uh, and I guess so was Charlie. <laughs> By the time I got to Look What You Made Me Do, I was playing a game with Abigail and she was like, this song is pretty bad. And I'm not gonna lie, I agree. It's, it's probably the worst song on the entire album. But other than that, I mean, other than a few songs, I was in the zone when I was listening to Reputation. One of my friends even called Reputation their Roman Empire. And the way that it starts with Ready For and then ends with New Year's Day was a, in their words, chef's kiss. I also had a moment where I wish like I, Wish I came across this album while I was running. Like I wish it just timed up, but it is what it is. My top three from Reputation were Ready For It, So It Goes, In Game, and then I have I Did Something Bad as an honorable mention. Next was Lover, and I'm not gonna lie, it was later in the day and I didn't know if I was gonna make it through that album, Folklore, Evermore, and Midnight all before the next morning. I kind of was just accepting defeat. But I did make it through Lover, and going from Reputation to Lover, I felt like she was like, all right, I'm gonna chill a little bit. I gave y'all like this much intensity, but now I'm gonna bring it back down just a little bit. My top three from Lover were Crew Summer, Lover, and You Need to Calm Down, and then I had Me and Daylight as honorable mention. So at this point, I knew I wasn't gonna finish before the next day, AKA today, and on top of that, going like being late at night and being tired 
listening to an album like Folklore, that's like the worst type of music for me to listen to if I'm gonna try to stay awake. I think I, I, I literally made it through the one and I fell asleep. So that's why I'm filming this after my big run because I went running at like six o'clock in the morning. I finished what I could of Folklore on the way to where I was gonna run and the rest of Folklore was listened to during my run along with Evermore and Midnight's. Now I will say before my run, I made sure to make a Taylor Swift running playlist because I knew I was gonna finish all those albums and I needed something to play right after that. I did it. Um, I feel like I'm training myself not to pay attention to necessarily the beat of the music when I run. And so it's actually helping me, which is a good thing. When my running playlist kicked in, like my custom Taylor Swift running playlist, it gave me a boost, I'm not gonna lie. Let's be honest, most of the songs came from the Reputation album because they were mostly upbeat and 1989, I'm not gonna lie. But here are my top three for all three of those albums. Folklore, we have Exile, I love that song. Number two, we have The One, and then number three is Mad Woman with Cardigan as an honorable mention. Hopping over Evermore, we have Willow as my number one song. Evermore, then Nobody, No Crime, and then honorable mentions are Champagne and Long Story. And then last but not least, Midnights. We're gonna start with Lavender Haze, Maroon, then Snow on the Beach with Midnight Rain and Antihero as honorable mentions. But after that, it was like a relief. I made it through all of her albums. It was funny because Abigail and I went out to lunch and somebody in this apartment that was above the place where we were, they, it was, they were playing, I don't know what song it was. I looked at Abigail and I was like, that's Taylor Swift. <laughs> Now that I'm at the point that I can listen to any of her songs as many times as I want, I actually asked some of my friends what their top albums and top songs were just so I could be prepared for this moment. Obviously, it's what I like, but I just wanted to see what they like. I found myself going back to Reputation a lot, not gonna lie, but let's talk about the NFL. As you know, Taylor Swift has been dating Travis Kelsey from the Kansas City Chiefs, hopefully this age as well. The NFL took notice and started giving her a lot of attention. I'm talking to the point where like the Chiefs would score a touchdown and they would show her, especially if Travis Kelsey made a catch. So as this is going on, of course fans took notice. In other words, the common consensus was people just saying, who cares? I say all of that to say that I watched some of the AFC Championship game, which featured the Chiefs and the Ravens. And I wanted the Chiefs to lose because I'm a Broncos fan and by default, I don't like the Chiefs. Nine seconds to go. Mahomes flings it. Today is the day that I can put my full Taylor Swift running playlist to the test. Now I just want to remind you that A, if you want to access this playlist for yourself, it's in the description of this video. And B, uh, these running songs are for me, even if they're like slow songs, like slow as in uh, like a song of a folklore, for example. The pace of the song works for me. So if it doesn't work for you, that's fine. But that's, this is just what works for, works for me. And on Spotify, for example, wow, that's weird. Uh, there's a bunch of other Taylor Swift running playlists. So mine isn't the best one. It might not be the best one. Here we are on the last day. First song I'm gonna listen to is Exile featuring Bon Iver. And I'm not gonna lie, when I first heard this song, like before I even did this challenge, like whenever it came out, I didn't realize it was a Taylor Swift song. I thought it was a Bon Iver song. I like Bon Iver, so like I, I was going about my life. And then eventually I realized Taylor Swift was in the song because I guess I don't pay attention. The only thing I haven't done yet this week is um, I haven't like cruised on my one wheel. Cause like when you're listening to music on your one wheel, it's like, it's a different type of experience than just walking around or going for a run or something like that. So. Now, as fun as this was, I knew there was only one true way to enjoy the fullness of Taylor Swift. Well, here we are a week and some change later. And it's funny because I got in my car uh, the day after I finished like the seven days and Taylor Swift was playing for my phone. I didn't even think about it. And I, I think it's because I've been so used to listening to her. But my first thought was like, why do people hate her so much? I mean, maybe it's her voice, maybe it's her music, maybe it's her success, maybe it's the way she looks, or it's like a blend of all of that. I don't know. But that also makes you think like, why do people love her so much? And I know that every artist has like those fans that are just obsessed with them, but it just makes you think like, why do people love Taylor Swift so much? My second thought was my Spotify algorithm's probably like, boy, you wildin' out here, what are you doing? Like they probably thought somebody like hacked my account or something. Now I will say that my rankings for the albums and each song on the album, 
it's changed since I've been able to like listen to all of her songs freely. Uh, so for example, on 1989, I had, I think I had Blank Space as number one, but it's totally not that anymore. Uh, it would definitely be the song style. So you have to remember that I just listened to the, all of her songs one time through and it was just basing it just off of that. Overall, I feel like Taylor Swift started out as like good old Taylor Swift, good old country singer Taylor Swift. And she obviously changed as most people change as they're growing in their career or whatever it is she changed. Like if I didn't know who she was at all and you were to show me like Fearless Taylor Swift versus Reputation Taylor Swift, I would have initially thought it was two different people. Like I, it just, to me, it would, just doesn't match up. But I will say like by the time you get to Midnight's, her album Midnight, I feel like it's a blend of all of her albums together. Now you might disagree with that, but that's just my take on it after listening through everything straight through. But speaking of her albums, this leads me to my final rankings of all of her albums. My top, I'm gonna do top three songs and top three albums. So it was actually difficult to choose between one and two, but my top albums are 1989, Reputation, and then Midnight's. While my top three songs are Style, Exile, and then so it goes. Now that may change in the future, but that also brings up other questions that I need to ask. Like, will you listen to Taylor Swift on the regular? I mean, I added her songs to my running playlist, but I don't know if I would like, if I get in the car just randomly, I, don't, I probably won't just turn on Taylor Swift. But I have this like random knowledge of like all of her songs now. So I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. Will you listen to her next album? I honestly say I will listen to it. Now I won't be like waiting for it to drop or anything. like. I could see myself forgetting about it that it's releasing and then like eventually listening to it, but I'm not like gonna be waiting for it or anything like that. Would you go to one of her concerts? See, I have a mixed review about this because I would go on the basis of like, I know that she and her production team historically have put on a good show. Like if you just want a good show, good production, I've heard that it's great. Regardless if you think she can sing or not, regardless if you actually like her or not, the show itself is good. So I would go, but being surrounded by all those people, all those diehard Swifties, I, I don't know if I would do that. That's that's just me. What are your honest opinions on Taylor Swift? So I don't hate her, I don't love her. Her and her writers and whoever else she works with, they know exactly what kind of tune to do with the songs, what kind of melody, all that kind of stuff. Things that work for what she's created her brand to be. So I respect her success and everything, but I'm not like a lover. Like to me, she's like that one food item that like I don't dislike this food, and I don't love this food, like it's not my favorite. It's just kind of in the middle, like I'll, I'll, I'll eat this maybe every now and then, but like it's not like, I'm not gonna be like, oh, let's go get this, you know what I'm saying? And the last question is, do you consider yourself a Swifty? Uh, short answer is no. If there was like a meter or something like that, I don't hate Taylor Swift and I'm not a Swifty, so I'm like in the middle. Like if it was 50%, you got your boy Relly. So, I mean, you can learn from this video, you can do whatever you want with it, but lastly, I would just say, just give people a chance, musically, uh, unless they just are terrible, give people a listening chance before you just judge them. I mean, that's that's a life lesson, not just for music. Yeah. Sunday morning views quickly turns to afternoons. It's like that I can barely go and catch it, kinda how I feel with you.